This week, I'll teach you about image georeferencing using ArcGIS. And the basic goal is you'll have a raster, and the raster will be in some non-map coordinate system. Um, it could be scanner inches in terms of XY inches, or if it's an aerial photograph that's just been taken, it could be in uh, rows and columns. And basically what we're going to do is use a georeferencing model to get that raster into a GIS planar coordinate system. So it could be a scan map in scanner inches. It could be an aerial photograph in rows and columns. But basically, we'll use a model to transform that raster from just basic XY coordinates into XY planar coordinates. OK, one thing to keep in mind is the relationship between um, columns and rows and our map coordinates. As we go from left to right, the column number increases. And as we go from left to right in most map coordinates, our x value increases. So there's a positive relationship between the image column and the map x. There's a negative relationship between the image row number and the map y. So for example, as we go down, the row number increases. But as we go down in planar coordinates, typically the y value decreases. So there's a negative relationship. OK, and here are the equations that we're going to use to model for georeferencing. Basically, we're going to predict for any pixel what its x and y map coordinates are as a function of the original column and row, and then model coefficients. And this is called the affine transformation, and it's an equation for a two-dimensional plane. So the key is here, our georeferencing assumes the landscape is flat, or we're dealing with an image such as a satellite image that the sensor is so far away from the Earth's surface that terrain uh, relief displacement is minimal. So here's a simple example. We've got a two-column, two-row raster, and we want to get it into the UTM coordinate system using this model. So basically, to predict the x-coordinate of any pixel, we'll have a coefficient 500,000 plus 25 times the column number plus 0 times the row number. So for this pixel, uh, column 0, row 0, we plug in the values. And we get for that pixel, it should have a UTM coordinate of 500,000 meters. And likewise, in the y, Remember I said there's a negative relationship between the row number and the y map coordinate. Here's that negative coefficient. So it's a negative 25. So anyways, for the y, we would plug in, this is the equation, plug in our column 0 and our row 0, and we get the UTM y coordinate for that first pixel. So basically, here is the first pixels x and y UTM coordinate. And we would do that all the way down to column 1, row 1. And its um, x value would be 500,025. And its y value would be 7180975. So every pixel had an original column number and row number. And after we apply this model, then every pixel has a UTM coordinate at the center of that pixel. OK, so I took this from ArcGIS Help. So these model coefficients are stored in something called a world file. So here's the example of the world file. So this first coefficient, 20, that would be what the pixel size is going to be in the x direction. And remember, I said there is a negative relationship in the y direction. So this negative 20 is what's the pixel value going to be in the y direction. So once again, I took this from ArcGIS Help, and this is just an example. So here's a cartoon, our original image, and then our geo-referenced image. And basically what the model does is A is what's the pixel size in the x direction, and then the coefficient E, it's a negative value, what's the pixel size in the y direction. 
And then the coefficient C is for the upper left hand pixel at the center of the pixel, what is the X map coordinate? The coefficient F is for the upper left hand pixel, the center of that pixel, what is the Y map coordinate? And then the other two coefficients are for rotation if we have to rotate the raster in any way. And this will become clearer as we do an example. And what you need to do is first use the ASCII to raster tool and create a TIFF image from this text file. And our TIFF image will have 10 rows and 10 columns. And the cell size for this example will be just a one meter, one foot, it doesn't really matter, a cell size of one. So first use the ASCII to raster tool to create a raster that's a TIFF raster. Okay, so now we've got this test raster and your colors will be different than mine. I they just randomly assigned colors, but basically it's 10 rows, 10 columns. There's one pixel value inside every pixel and the cell size is one. So what we want to do is we'll make some polygons in the UTM coordinate system and then we'll georeference this test raster to fit to those polygons. Okay, so we could use the create fishnet tool and I'll just make a shapefile called squares. And the origin will be right at the central meridian of the UTM coordinate system, which is at 500,000 meters. And then we're in Alaska, let's go um, 7,180,000 meters north of the equator. And then our y-axis will go straight up and down. So our y-axis will have the same x value and then some y value that's greater than the origin. So in this case, I did 7,181,000 meters. And then we'll make each square 30 meters by 30 meters. And there will be 10 rows and 10 columns in our polygon shape file. And then we'll also create points at the center of each square and then the geometry type will be polygon. And then just OK. And that will create our polygons. So then we could right mouse click zoom to layer. They're going to be way north and east of our test raster. So here's our squares. And here's our square labels. So then what we'll do is we'll define these as being in the UTM coordinate system um, zone six. So I use the define projection tool and my coordinate system is UTM zone six NAD 83. And I do the same thing for my label points. And I'll def define my data frame also being the same UTM zone six coordinate system. Okay, so now these are in the UTM coordinates and our test raster is in some unknown coordinate system. So if I go to properties, all it knows is a cell size is one and one, but it has no idea what the coordinate system is. And it doesn't have a coordinate system, it's undefined. Okay, so if you use Windows Explorer, go to the folder where you created your TIFF raster and you'll find a file that has an extension TFW. And that's the world file containing the coefficients for this affine transformation model. So we'll open that and edit it. And let's open it in WordPad. So the first coefficient is the pixel size in the X direction. And if you recall, our polygon squares are 30 meters wide and 30 meters high. So we'll change our X pixel scaling coefficient to 30. And then the Y is the negative one, so we'll change that to negative 30. So basically what that's going to do is transform our pixels from a pixel size of 1 and 1 to a pixel size of 30 wide, 30 high. And then the translation coefficients are what is the coordinate of the center of the upper left-hand pixel. So we have to determine that in ArcMap. So run the geoprocessing tool add XY to add the XY coordinates for these points. And you can see that this point that I selected has an X value of 500,015 meters. 
and a Y value of 7180285. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste that as my Y translation coefficient. And then the X one was 500,015. And then we'll just save this world file and save yes. So basically what this says is use the model so the pixels will be 30 in the X direction, 30 in the Y direction, and the center of the upper left-hand pixel will be at an X coordinate of 500,015, and the center of the upper left-hand pixel will have a Y coordinate of this value. So then we'll remove test raster, and under ArcMap Options, make sure that you have Use World File to define the coordinates of the raster. And then I'm going to clear selected, and then we'll add our test raster one more time. So now I'll we'll use that World File. So it doesn't know what the coordinate system is. And then we'll drag that on top and turn it on. So basically, the model transformed that original raster into the correct size, and then it moved it using those translation coefficients. And then the last step would be we need to define the coordinate system once we've uh, basically transformed this raster into the UTM coordinate system. So we'll use the define projection to define this as being the UTM coordinate system. So I could go to results, we've done it once. So then we'll just use that same tool for our test raster. And then our raster is in the UTM coordinate system. Okay. So this coefficient is a scaling coefficient, which basically stretches each pixel, so it's 30 meters in the x direction. This is a scaling coefficient, so each pixel is 30 meters in the y direction. This is a translation coefficient defining the UTM coordinate at the center of the upper left-hand pixel. And this is a translation coefficient defining the center of the upper left-hand pixel, what its y UTM coordinate is. There's two more coefficients that are used in rotation. And if it's a negative value, it's going to rotate down and to the left. So let's give this a negative value of, uh, let's say, negative 10. And let's give it a negative value of negative 10 and save it. And then we'll add test raster one more time. So what I'll do is make this hollow. And we don't need our points anymore, so I'll remove that. And then we'll add our test raster. So now it has a rotation coefficient. So you see it's been rotated down and to the left. And this is the axis of where it's rotated from. And likewise, we could have a positive rotation coefficient and that will rotate up and to the right. So we'll do a positive 10 for these two rotation coefficients. And then we'll add our test raster. So now it's rotated up and to the right. Okay, and the reason why sometimes you may want to rotate a raster is you might have an aerial photograph and the aerial photograph that is some other color, is flying in a direction that's not straight north south, so the raster has to be rotated. Or you have a satellite image, and a satellite is trying to capture the Earth's surface at the same local time, so it needs to orbit the Earth going from a northeast to a southwest direction, so that each satellite scene is approximately at the same time on the Earth's surface. Okay, so. That's the affine transformation, and that's what we're going to use this week for most of our geo-referencing.